be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The rulers sneered at Jesus and said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, We have been condemned justly, for the sentence we recede corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. So in today's gospel, we are gazing at a pivotal moment in human history, Jesus Christ being crucified on the hill of Calvary. We have heard this story so many times that we could put ourselves into it at the foot of his cross. From one perspective, it's a disastrous event. It shows mankind rejecting and destroying its creator, Savior and God. And yet today is the day when the whole church throughout the entire world celebrates Christ's universal kingship. So if that's what we truly believe, it can bring up some intriguing thoughts. Kings are supposed to be powerful, successful, and victorious in all that they do. So why then in today's gospel are we staring at a dying, helpless man nailed to the cross. My brothers and sisters, the reason is, is that the cross is God's throne. Christ reigns not from a velvet-covered, gold-plated seat like earthly kings. Rather, he reigns from the wooden cross. The cross was one of the cruelest forms of punishment that the Romans had. It inflicted pain, misery, humiliation, and ultimately death. It also induced fear to those who witnessed the death on the cross. It helped keep those under the rule of the Romans in line. So the question arises this morning, how can this sign of utter defeat also be the sign of Christ's everlasting victory? This is what St. John Paul called the paradox of Christ's kingship. Christ's kingdom begins in this world but it's not of this world. It begins in the hearts of Christians like us, his followers, who believe and obey him. And so, since his kingdom goes beyond this world, it makes sense that Christ's throne is different from earthly thrones. Christ's kingdom is built on the power of God's love for each of us. On the cross, Jesus revealed that love by suffering and dying for our sins. And in his resurrection, he revealed that power that cannot be conquered. That is why our king reigns from such a throne. The good thief understood this. The bad thief and the rulers of the time didn't. As Jesus hung on the cross, revealing God's saving love, they mocked him. 
They knew that he had claimed to be the Messiah, the Savior, the King of Israel, but they could only imagine kingship in earthly terms. So they challenged Jesus to come down from the cross, but he didn't do it. He didn't even respond with an explanation. He kept suffering until the very end. The good thief realized the truth. He realized that there was more to the story than what we see. He knew that Jesus held the king to, key to the kingdom much greater than any on earth could ever know. He understood that Christ's kingdom could begin on earth through faith, hope, and obedience, that it would reach its fullness later hereafter. And so he made his prayer, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus didn't take away the good thief's suffering, but he gave that suffering purpose. He made it a path to paradise. And as he hung on the cross next to Jesus, he was happy because he had placed himself under the king's protection, and he believed that the king would keep his promise. In September, my wife Terry and I visited that very place that Jesus died for our sins on the cross. And as we were in line in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, we climbed a series of very steep, ancient granite steps to get to the place of the cross. I looked down at the steps as I was climbing. They were visibly worn from the millions of pilgrims that had walked up these very, very steps. And as we reached the place of Christ's crucifixion, we prostrated ourselves one by one to worship, to reverence, and touch the very bedrock that the cross had been wedged into. I was both overwhelmed with grief for my sins of my life, and I also experienced the great peace of his mercy. I was overcome with tears. We all want to experience that purpose and inner peace that comes from living under Christ's rule, from entrusting our lives into his care, by letting ourselves be governed by Christ like the good thief. We, too, can experience his great mercy. Today, the Church reminds us that these are right desires, that we have been created for something greater than passing comforts and earthly achievements. We can fulfill these desires by simply following Christ, by making him the center and the governing force in our lives. Christ is our King. He is our Savior. He knows and loves us without limit, and he makes it simple for us to follow him. All we have to do is to decide that our priority in life will be to know, love, and imitate Jesus a little bit more each day and to let ourselves be citizens in his kingdom, to get to know him better through prayer and study of his word in the Gospels and in his church teachings, by loving him by obeying his commandments, and imitating him by loving our neighbors without exception, just as he has loved us. Last week in his homily, Father Mo was speaking about Jesus when he was prophesying about the destruction of the temple, he asked us all to imagine how we would feel if we came to St. Marie's this morning and found nothing but a pile of rubble. We would be distraught as the Jews would be at losing our place of worship. We can look upon the beauty of this great church built so many years ago with its many beautiful statues, stained glass windows, and the beautiful altars. But today I ask you to focus on the center of our main altar. We see Jesus hanging on the cross, and we can imagine the excruciating pain and agony that he went through. It is a frightening scene, just like the Romans wanted to show. But how many of us here today wear around our necks that very symbol of fear and agony? When we see the crucifix today, it is a symbol to remind us of Jesus' love for us and his infinite mercy. It is a symbol of hope, of light overcoming darkness, life victorious over the grave, and good triumphing over evil. The cross is anchored to the earth, but it stretches up into heaven 
as our happiness begins on this earth when we discover the depths of God's love for us, but it will never be complete until with God's grace we reach his, earthly king, his heavenly kingdom. In this life, we are called to work and resist the tugs of our selfish nature. We are called to reach out to our neighbors who don't know Christ, who have no purpose in the midst of their suffering, and to introduce them to Jesus. We are called to defend our Christian values, even if society attacks us because of it. And above all, we must never limit our faith to our private lives. Our faith must affect everything that we do and all that we are. Jesus offers us his citizenship in his kingdom, but he leaves us free to accept or reject that offer. Today, let us renew that acceptance when he proves his love for us once again in the sacrifice of the Mass. Let us profess our love for him. Let us invite him into our minds. Let him reign there through our firm belief in all of his teachings. Let us invite him into our wills, that part of us where we make our decision, and let him reign there through our loving obedience to his commandments, especially the commandment to love our neighbors as he has loved us. Let us invite him into our hearts and let him reign there by our desire to know, love, and to follow our King. And today especially, before we receive our Lord in the Holy Communion, let us put more meaning than usual into the words that sum up every Christian's fundamental mission and deepest desire. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Long live Christ the King. Regina Jenny, let her